Well, one of my followers decided to ask me a question of what about gravity waves when I mentioned about gravity being electromagnetic. And so I thought, well, I'll do a video on that because gravitational waves are electromagnetic. And this is another case where Einstein got it wrong. And he got it wrong in multiple ways, beginning with his idea that there was no medium in space, that there was no quantum field. Now we know there's a quantum field, so we know there's a medium. And the medium can behave in a hydrodynamic fashion. And if you look up gravity waves and gravitational waves, you find out there is something that normally goes by gravity waves that you find in water, in the sea because gravity changes the hydrodynamic pressure. Well, it does the same thing in the quantum field. And he also assumed that the effects on light were not electromagnetic. Well, light is an electromagnetic phenomenon. So any changes to the velocity of light are electromagnetic effect. So to get in more detail on that, when he started out, describing general relativity, his first attempt, he thought that matter changed the dielectric constant. It changed the permittivity of space. And then he realized that that was inconsistent with his special theory of relativity and decided he had to fudge it into a spatial contraction, spatial curvature model that he ultimately came up with. But we know from the Casimir effect that quantum fluctuations behave like dipoles because Casimir effect is due to van der Waals forces between quantum dipoles, quantum fluctuation dipoles. And these quantum dipoles have wavelengths and frequencies and the quantum field has permittivity and permeability that arise from interactions between the quantum fluctuations. Basically, when you have a van der Waals force, you also have van der Waals torque. That when you have a sea of dipoles, when one dipole rotates, it causes another dipole to rotate, and which causes other dipoles to rotate, and more and more. And each of those dipoles require some energy to rotate. So there's a resistance to rotation, which is resistance to polarization and a resistance to magnetization which gives us the permittivity and permeability. So wavelengths, frequencies, which are dimensions, your physical distances, and your rate of time, because frequencies are in cycles per second. Those are emergent, frequency, those are emergent properties of the quantum field. And you also have the permittivity and permeability are emergent properties of the quantum field. And since the speed of light C equals one over the square root of epsilon mu, the permittivity and permeability. The permittivity and permeability give you the speed of light. So as the van der Waals torque increases, permittivity and permeability increase, which decreases speed of light. And when you apply that to relativity, special relativity and general relativity, you get an electromagnetic form of special and general relativity that I've talked about in some other videos. And so general relativity is a purely electromagnetic phenomenon. And as I said, photons are electromagnetic waves. So general relativistic effects on photons are electromagnetic in origin. It's purely electromagnetic phenomenon. It has, and it has nothing to do with a change in dimensions. Now we can note that gravitational waves were discovered by the LIGO apparatus and the LIGO apparatus is a laser interferometer. And you have photons coming from lasers that interfere with each other in order to get destructive interference patterns. And these patterns show up and change when the speed of light changes. And this is a real change in speed of light. 
and the speed of light changes when the permittivity and permeability change. So what we're seeing in these laser interferometers, assuming we're seeing anything at all, I'm open to the discussion that these interferometers are so close to what's measurable that, that perhaps we're not even measuring anything in some cases. But that said, we have medium, the quantum field, so we have to have gravity waves. So because we're looking at laser interference patterns, a change in the speed of light, it's an electromagnetic effect. So gravity waves are electromagnetic effect where the permittivity and permeability oscillate. And so in reality, those oscillations of the permittivity and permeability can be treated as a hydrodynamic effect where you get compression waves due to gravity like you do in water and those compression waves increase the permittivity and permeability and then it cause, cause and certain effects can cause an oscillation in the permittivity and permeability changing the wave pattern. And those oscillations could conceivably be picked up in a LIGO type experiment. So there's no space contraction involved at all. Gravity waves are strictly electromagnetic. And gravitational waves are gravity waves within the quantum field. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please like it and share it with your physicist friends and subscribe for my next ones and if you'd like to learn more about quantum field theory or my particle theory i have some books for sale and if you buy one of my books that helps support my continued research and now i, I will say that i have not published a paper on this and i have not read a paper that reaches the same conclusion i have so it's on my to-do list and if you're a physicist who would like to co-author a paper with me, then uh, send me a message and, and we can work on that. So thanks for watching.